In this video, we're going to be covering lofting tools. For the most part, lofting tools in Form Z can be found under the Derive 3 palette, which is the fifth icon down in the first row. And the tools are all found in this lower row. We have Ruled Surface, Tangent Loft, Guide Loft, Perpendicular Loft, Path Loft, and Branched Loft. So lofts can be really useful when you're not doing simple extrusions. Basically, if you were to think about it this way, we're going to blend between one surface and another. So blending from a rectangular shape to a circular shape. It doesn't matter which order I select those in. You could go either way. But once you do that, you get a series of surfaces that blends from one to another. Now, you don't have to have only two sources to do a loft. You can have as many as you want, but two is the minimum. So what I'm going to do here is add a third one right in the middle of those two. And it does matter which order you pick them in, because FormZ is going to loft between them in the order that you choose. So going from bottom to top or top to bottom, you'll definitely not want to choose the top and then the bottom and then the middle. You will get very unexpected geometry if you were to do that. So I'm gonna choose my ruled surface tool and then I'm gonna hold down the shift key on the keyboard when I have more than two sources to choose from. And I'm gonna click on them in the order I want Form Z to loft them. So again, it doesn't matter if I go from top to bottom or bottom to top. So this time I'll go from top to bottom. Holding down the shift key, I'll first click on the circle on the top, then the elongated rectangle in the middle, and then the square at the bottom. And then when I let go of the shift key, you'll notice that the cursor changes. And if we click anywhere in the project, it will then loft between those. So a ruled surface is blending directly from one shape to the next without any smoothing in between. It is a direct transition from one object to the next. And you'll notice that my operands, which we covered in the last video right now, is set to keep. So we can still see the initial source object. If I use my pick tool, there's that top source object, there's that middle source object, and there's that bottom source object. So it will keep those there if you have the keep operands option turned on. Now let's take a look at this in a different situation where we're going to blend between two surfaces. Now in the last example, I lofted between two closed surface shapes. So again, I could of course do that and I'll get this very skewed rectangle. It's not what I want in this case. I actually want to loft between this edge of this lower surface to this edge of this upper surface. And if I hover over these, you'll notice the entire surface highlights in red as a selection. If I hold down the Command key on the Mac or the Control key on Windows, I get a sub-object selection. I'm going to click on this segment of this lower plane, and I'm going to click on this segment of the upper plane. You'll see that it lofts directly between those. So again, that's a ruled surface. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a different option here on the right as a different type of an example, where if I wanted a smoother blend between these, I would choose Tangent Loft. So again, holding down the Command key, on Mac or Control on Windows, I'm going to click on those two different segments and it's going to blend between those. It looks exactly the same as the ruled surface. But now looking at our tool options, we have some additional options to look at here. We can turn on tangent at the start and tangent at the end. And now you can see it's blending smoothly between those using those surface edges as tangents to create the correct blend between those two surfaces. And we can also now adjust the magnitude. So right now, the default magnitude is 1 and 1 for each one of these. Let's take a look and see what these look like if we bump them up to 2 and 2. So using the Tab key, you can see it extends the tangent out further before it starts to blend down to the lower surface. So you can play with these numbers, and you don't have to use whole numbers. You can, of course, use decimals as well. So I'm going to use 1.5, and, and then I'm going to tab down here to 1.5 and get something a little bit in between one and two that is a little bit more to my liking. And you can turn these on and off and just do one side or the other. Of course, all of these controls are manipulatable while we're still in the object buffer. And it's important to point out that this only works while we're in the object buffer. If I deselect and then reselect that surface, right click, you'll notice that show controls is not an option that we can choose. So my only option if I wanted to change that would be to redo the loft with different tool options invoked. Now that works with straight segments, but it also works with curving segments, of course. So I can go back to my tangent loft tool and I can use my command key on this segment. And then I can use my command key on the second segment. 
and you can see that it will blend smoothly between both of those. I could then complete these surfaces by using the tangent loft, or in this case, I could use the ruled loft to go between those two surfaces and these two up here to blend smoothly between all of those surfaces. Just to illustrate that a little bit further, let's go ahead and tangent loft between these two curving surfaces in this case. So again, holding down the command key, I'm gonna click on the two edges that I wanna loft together, and then I'm going to turn on the tangent options for both of those, and it gives a really beautiful, smooth blend between all of those. So there's one. I am then going to do the same thing on this one over here and again, invoke the tangents and maybe change the power on this one to two for both of these options to get a little bit more of a blend between those two. And you can see that it is really smoothly blending there. Now, these are all still separate objects because all we've done is loft between them. And when we do that loft, it creates a new object in between the original two. What I'm gonna do now is use the stitch tool to make that one continuous sheet so it's one object. So I'm gonna use the option spacebar keyboard shortcut to bring up my assistant and start typing stitch, hit the enter key, and then stitch these two objects together, and then stitch these two objects together. You see now I have one continuous sheet all the way across, and now this is something I can use to further build off of as I continue my modeling journey. Now we can also loft between surfaces of solid objects. So in this case, using the tangent loft tool, I'm going to click on the top surface of this cylinder object, and I'm gonna orbit underneath to the bottom surface of this rounded cube object and blend between both of those. And again, by default, it's giving us the direct blend between those two shapes but you'll notice that we still have the ability to turn on our tangents at the beginning and the end. And this is where I'll show a completely different option, which are these buttons underneath the tangent options. So if I switch a tangent face, normally it's going to use the tangent that is the most obvious, where if I turn that back to how it was, it blends directly vertically toward the other face that I'm blending into. But if I switch the tangent face, you know, another direction than that, face is facing is towards itself. So you can see in this case, it actually bulges out and then down into itself, giving us kind of this mushroom bottom. If I change the magnitude on that, it'll become even more apparent. So I'm gonna flare that out even more to the number two. And let's go ahead and do that at the top as well. So I'm gonna switch that tangent face and balloon it out to the top up there. So it isn't a direct blend, but it is still a loft between those two different shapes. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use my pick tool. I'm going to highlight that new object, right click, and I'm going to isolate that so you can see exactly what it looks like. It's blending between the outlines of those two different shapes, which brings up another point that is a tool option when we're doing this. So I'm going to go back and reveal my objects and do this one more time with the tangent loft. Again, clicking on the top surface of the lower object and the bottom surface of the upper object. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn on tangents again, which isn't necessarily that important, but I'm going to turn on caps this time. And what caps does, if I again isolate this object, as you can see, it caps off the top and bottom, not leaving it a surface, but it is now a solid. So if it's important to you that you maintain solid objects instead of just surfaces when you're doing lofting, and you're using closed faces as the sources of that loft, you may want to turn on caps to maintain those solid objects. Now let's take a look at the guide loft option. So clicking on the guide loft tool and explaining what I have in the scene here, I just have three wires. I have two straight wires, one along the reference plane, one copy of that same line directly above it. And then I have what is called the guide of this loft connecting between those two. When you're using a guide loft, you have to have at least one guide and it has to touch the source shapes. So I'm gonna click on my lower profile, then I'm gonna click on my upper profile and then I'm going to select my guide. And you can see what it does instead of smoothly lofting between those two, right? If I were to go back and just do a ruled surface between the bottom and top lines, I would get a straight loft between those two. It is now using that center guide along this curve to guide the loft as it goes from bottom to top at the point at which it exists. So between the ends of my lines, it is drawing a straight line, just like the ruled surface loft, 
but in the middle where that other guide is, it is bending the loft along there. So again, selecting the bottom, then the top, then the guide, we get this really beautiful curve along that guide. Now to illustrate this a little bit more, instead of simply lofting from one straight edge to another along a guide, I'm gonna complicate it a little bit. I'm gonna turn on the visibility of another spline that I have drawn here. Again, the guide must touch the two source splines that you're going to be lofting between. This time I'm gonna choose the bottom spline and the top spline and then the guide once again. And so now it's lofting from that spline at the bottom to the straight edge at the top and still using the guide in the middle to determine the curvature of this loft. So you can use some very complicated shapes. You don't have to use simple ones when you're doing these lofts. And you can get some really beautifully organic results. Now you don't simply have to have one guide. You can have multiple guides. And those guides can be wherever they need to be on your source shapes to create the geometry that you want. In this case, we're gonna make use of the shift key when we're doing our selections. So again, using the guided loft tool, I'm gonna to click on my two sources that I'm lofting between. And now instead of simply clicking on one guide, I'm gonna click on both, but I'm gonna hold down the shift key first. So now holding down the shift key, you'll see we get that little green plus icon next to our cursor. And then I click on my second guide and then when I let go of the shift key, my cursor changes once again so that I can click anywhere in the project to execute that command. And now you can see that it's using both guides to create the loft as it goes between my two different source shapes. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to get notified when new videos are released on this channel, click the subscribe button below and click the notification bell icon to get a notification when new videos are released. See you in the next one.